Disrupt Education, episode 12, we made it, Mr. Steven Jackson. We're in the Oak Park Library, the central office, would you call this? The main branch. The main branch. Uh, tell us a little bit about your title and what you do here. I'm here, I'm the community resource specialist at Oak Park Public Library. Um, Robert Simmons is the manager of community, community resource department. Um, we are a new department within the Oak Park Public Library. We are the fifth uh, library to hire social workers nationally. Mm. And I think now there's 13 or 14 um, libraries. So we are a social services department of the library because we have vulnerable, vulnerable populations here in Oak Park. And that's who we are here to serve. We're referral based. Mm -hmm. um, so I pretty much during the day, I do outreach uh, to vulnerable patrons and to community agencies to build relationships. Our, our uh, strategic focus here is engagement, learning, and stewardship. So if it's not in alignment with those three strategic focus, mm -hmm. I just don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's what I do. And also in the evenings, uh, I work with the 100% College and Career mm -hmm. uh, program, Francis Craft, that part of the E-Team. Um, and what we do is provide supplemental education, mm -hmm. no supports for students at um, various schools. This is a public library, right. so anyone can come in mm -hmm. and utilize um, the service, but um, precedence uh, is for um, preferences before for the patrons mm -hmm. uh, in the community, the car, pay, the car owners and taxpayers. Right. Oh, that's amazing. So we were just talking a little bit before the interview about innovating and taking a look at different ways to educate youth. Um, and I know you work with a lot of youth, um, a lot of amazing people that I've, I've actually met through you or some of the students that I've had. Um, tell us a little bit about how, what, what kind of things you do a little bit differently than possibly like a traditional school setting here when you're, when you're building uh, young men and women. I build relationships. Mm -hmm. um, that is the biggest difference um, in most school setting environments. Um, the relationship is not at the forefront of the learning experience. Um, for a lot of youth uh, that I've worked with, um, that's essential in order to actually teach them. You have to build a relationship. They're not going to just take information from anybody. How do, you, how do you go about building a relationship? Are there certain steps or do you like each individual uh, um, young person or you have um, a strategy there? I do. Uh, I use the, the four cornerstones of engagement, mm -hmm. uh, the mental, um, the uh, spiritual, the emotional, and the physical aspects, um, holistic mm -hmm. approach um, to building relationships with people in general. So um, you have to build relationships and, and, and mentally you have to capture the person in order for them to pay attention to you. You have to speak to their spirit. Um, and, and, and emotions is, is one of the most hard, the hardest quadrants of the circle um, to deal with because people get emotional, emotional about issues um, as you get to know them. Um, and then the last quadrant is the physical and that, that's movement and that's pro progress. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have uh, four cornerstones of engagement which I use and I use the day to day life, I live it. Yeah. Um, so that's how I do it but I observe um, uh, my subject or the student <laughs> right. um, or the person um, and ask questions. Mm -hmm. That's the way um, the world, that's the way the world works, um, questions and answers. Right, right. As, as a design thinker, I can kind of see the evolution of, you know, the ethnography and, and those, and we do use the four corners in some of our PD, we were struggling to get that into a classroom, which kind of leads into my next question. Um, you know, uh, you actually went to the high school that, that I work at, um, and I think that, you know, it's eight periods a day, right? And, and how it's set up now. Um, knowing what you know now, um, going back, how would you change high school? How would you, how would you change the format uh, to incorporate some of that social emotional learning or the four corners? I would, the first week of school for every instructor in the, um, for everybody in, within the context of the school, we'll be building relationships. Every class would have a circle or however you want to build the relationship um, with the students, but um, circle format is something that I use. Um, every class would do peace circles. Mm -hmm. um, and like, you would get to know people. 
in in an academic setting, um, relationships aren't. Um, I don't know how I want to put it, but we're disrupting education here. Uh, <laughs> so uh, when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, teachers weren't. Um, empowered to build relationships that was frowned upon mm -hmm. um, I think times have changed and I think even then they probably should have used that template but like you have to be and I can't stress it enough to build relationships with these with these young people in the classroom that you have in front of you in the traditional um, call and response um, the teacher uh, dictating and then falsifying information like what we have to do is change the curriculum because the information that we got was false right right like it and then i and we know this and it's documented and yet we still <laughs> teach our kids that's what that's why they, that's why they approach school the way they approach it because it's, they look at it like that didn't happen right no you're lying so mm -hmm. um that's what i would do i would start putting truth in schools mm -hmm. uh, you would, you would start empowering people, but schools traditionally weren't created to um, create leaders. Mm -hmm. They needed a workforce. Right. So, <laughs> that's, yeah. Let's mass produce that's worker bees. Right, right. That, that's the exact same because I, I see, you know, it's, it's almost an enigma when you walk in a school where you have bells every 48 minutes, there's clocks everywhere it's so systematic so Condition. what do you see uh, happening to to education in the future what do you see where do you see it going because I think you're doing some pretty cool things here uh, meeting some of the students that, that you work with um, hearing their stories uh, and you sharing your story what, what do you see it what do you see it going in the next five to ten years with the leaders that we should be producing as you're talking about because it's different different type, abundance of, of, of types of education. Mm -hmm. um, me personally, I went through a lot of experiential um, learning right. um, to educate me on how to move forward. But I'm 41, so I've mm -hmm. lived 41 years to learn what I know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I pour in. I pour in, I see the model of, of people sharing personal stories, mm -hmm. um, being a part of education, because that's the mentoring component, coaching, mentoring, however you want to call it. Um, these are just my dreams. Like I don't, I, I don't believe in systems, mm -hmm. educational systems that weren't designed to educate people. So I don't know what direction they're gonna go. That's on the people who run that. But like from what I do, this is what I'm gonna continue to do. And the youth that I teach, um, or that teach me, because for me, mentoring is not a one way street. It's mm -hmm. a two way street. I learn more from them than they learn from me. Right. I couldn't have the working knowledge about the information that I have if I didn't have the relationships with them to get the information, and, and it's vice versa. Right, right. So um, that's what I see. I see more community coming back together. That's that, that's a big component. Um, think about it. Like we learn how to walk by watching. Right. And we saw people moving around. We're just laying around and we're seeing people move around and we're like. I want to do that. At some point in time, the baby said, you know what, I'm going to do that. I think they did it like this. And then the baby starts walking and the baby starts doing a lot of other things. Like we have to let youth um, live and learn. Um, I feel like this with my, with my child that I have, he's going to have a lot of bumps and bruises possibly coming up. And long as he does, long as it doesn't take his life or threaten the life of someone else with what he's doing, mm -hmm. Learn. You're gonna have. I broke bones. Mm -hmm. I got in trouble. Like I get it, but I'm here. Mm -hmm. And he's resilient. He has my blood and the blood of my father, the blood of my ancestors. So he's resilient. I love it. I love it. Can't thank you enough for being here, man. Inviting us to the library. Appreciate it. Stephen Jackson. You can look him up on uh, Oak Park. Uh, OP, OPBL dot org. OPBL. We'll put all that up here. Uh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate no your story. Thank it's it's wonderful. Uh, till the next time, keep disrupting education.